Many top players flex their shoulder and drop their elbow during their stroke. Usually, the drop occurs only after the hit during the follow-through after the cue ball is long gone. Regardless of what mechanics a pro uses, even if the technique is contrary to what most instructors recommend, pros spend countless hours mastering their technique, and they can deliver the cue accurately and consistently regardless of their mechanics choices. For most people, including many pros, keeping the shoulder and elbow still during the stroke will produce better and more consistent results. Many amateurs who move their shoulder and drop their elbow have trouble with timing and consistency, leading to tip contact point and stroke inaccuracy. If this might be the case for you, you've come to the right place. There are several ways to stroke a pull cue, and any technique can be mastered with enough practice. Here's an excerpt from my pull terminology video that covers the main stroke types. The recommended type of stroke is called a pendulum stroke, where the shoulder and elbow remain still. An alternative piston stroke, where the cue moves in a straight line, requires coordinated shoulder and up and down elbow motion. A common stroke variation is called a J-stroke, where the backstroke and forward stroke into the cue ball are pendulum style to help ensure tip contact point accuracy, and the follow-through is more piston style with the elbow dropping. The grip hand trajectory is shaped like a flattened horizontal letter J. Russian pro Fedor Gorst has a stroke very close to the J-type. Notice how his elbow doesn't drop until after the hit on the cue ball. He has a still elbow pendulum stroke into the cue ball. Also notice how the Q-tip moves very close to a straight line during the follow-through as the elbow drops. If you go to the Elbow Drop resource page linked in the video description, you can find lists of both advantages and disadvantages of elbow drop during the stroke. Here is the list of advantages. Primarily, elbow drop can allow you to generate more power with less effort and strain, and it is more natural. Here is the list of disadvantages. Visit the link if you want to review the pros and cons in more detail. This excerpt from my Top 10 Secrets of a Good Draw Shot video summarizes some of the primary disadvantages. If you drop your elbow, you will not hit the cue ball where you expect, and you won't get as much or any draw. It is actually okay to drop the elbow if you can drop it straight, and if you drop it mostly after the hit. I got good draw on that shot since most of the elbow drop occurred after the hit. One problem with elbow drop for some people is that other bad things sometimes come with it, like wrist turn. Or they also chicken wing the elbow out as the elbow goes down. Here's an exaggerated example. If you want to stop moving your elbow, but you are having trouble doing so, the advice in this section might help. Let's start with some recommendations for my Top 10 Secrets of a Good Draw Shot video. You can have a friend lightly place fingers around your elbow while you stroke back and forth. If you drop your elbow, it will be clear to both you and your friend. Your friend can also hold your upper arm and shoulder while you stroke to remind you that these should be still to keep the elbow from dropping. Another clue of a dropping elbow is banging the cue into the rail. Again, keep your elbow still during the stroke into the ball to be accurate with the tip contact point. Here are some additional techniques you can do on your own that might help. Get down in your stance addressing the cue ball and shift your bridge hand and cue to the side where you can stroke past the cue ball. Then take air strokes, going back slowly and accelerating forward smoothly past the cue ball to simulate the stroking motion. Now, keeping everything still, just turn your head back so you can see your forearm. Continue the air strokes to observe if your shoulder and upper arm are moving, causing your elbow to drop. If so, try to keep this from happening, really focusing on pendulum motion of the forearm. This is good practice, because once you find it, you will be both seeing and feeling a still elbow stroke, and this will help build brain muscle memory. Now you can shift back over to the cue ball and attempt to stroke the same way. If you are still having trouble with the shoulder moving, it might help to lock and load the shoulder while standing. As I show here, just lift and tuck back your shoulder as part of your pre-shot routine and really focus on keeping it in this position during the stroke. Another benefit of the shoulder lock and load is if you tend to have a chicken wing setup with the elbow out away from your body like this, the shoulder tuck can help you get your elbow in with the forearm more vertical. 
You can see this more clearly from behind. Some people have commented on my stance in previous videos concerning my shoulder alignment. My cue and forearm are in the plane of the shot, but my shoulder is well outside the plane. Traditional pool instruction suggests the shoulder should also be in the shot plane. Here's an excerpt from my How to Find Your Personal Best Stance video that covers this topic. For some people, especially those with an open stance, it can be difficult to position the upper arm and shoulder in the shot plane. You might need to pull your shoulder back and or add body and neck twist and turn, which might not be as comfortable. But this might not be necessary. If the elbow and forearm are in a shot plane, you can still create a straight stroke. The problem with an out-of-plane forearm is the stroke will move the grip hand in an arc and the cue will not go straight. If your forearm is vertical and your vision center is properly aligned, and if you can keep your elbow still during the stroke into the cue ball with straight line cue motion, it doesn't matter where the upper arm and shoulder are. If you are still having trouble keeping your elbow still, it can help to focus on different things. While doing air strokes, first try to focus on keeping your shoulder locked. If the shoulder joint does not move, the elbow cannot drop. Keeping the shoulder still is a good thing because the shoulder can move in many different ways that can throw the cue offline. If that doesn't work, try to instead focus on keeping your upper arm perfectly still, again while taking air strokes. If that doesn't work, instead try to focus on keeping your elbow still, imagining your elbow joint as a hinge with the hinge pin fixed in space. And if that doesn't work, instead try to focus on the grip hand coming up to the chest. With a pendulum stroke, the hand should come up during the follow-through. Try to find out which of these focusing targets works best for you. After enough practice with this, eventually you won't need to focus on the stroke mechanics anymore. The still elbow pendulum stroke will become your new natural motion. If none of this works, you can do air strokes up against a wall. If you feel and hear lots of rubbing, it is because you are moving your shoulder and upper arm, causing the elbow to drop. Once you get your elbow to stop dropping, you won't hear and feel the rubbing. Here it is from the side. Again, if you drop your elbow, you will feel and hear lots of rubbing. And with the elbow still, it will be quieter with much less rubbing. So, should you drop your elbow during your pull stroke? Well, if you can drop it with perfect and consistent timing, and if you drop it straight down with no chicken wing motion, and if you have been effective dropping your elbow for many years, then there is no reason to change. However, if you have trouble with tip contact point accuracy, or if you have trouble with stroke straightness and consistency, keeping your shoulder, upper arm, and elbow still can help you be more effective, and it might help you reach your potential more quickly. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.